Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch and it is a glorious day for Blender users because we have a brand new release of Blender. Yes, Blender 3.1 was just released and I gotta say, there's quite a bit in this, but the star of the show is definitely Geometry Nodes. Now, if you got no idea what a Geometry Node is, well, you're in for a treat. Basically, uh, Blender is moving towards the design of everything as a node. It's a very Houdini-like approach, and basically, you can compose scenes, like what you see in front of you, using a network of nodes. And there have been a lot of improvements in this particular release in terms of those nodes uh, that are available. There are several new nodes available, so you can see a node network down here. Now, one of the big new things they added was time. So you can actually create um, these networks that uh, evolve and change based on the amount of time that has elapsed since the scene started. On top of that, we've gotten some new functionality. So now you can actually do uh, drag and drop out and you will get a contextual menu of the appropriate items there. Uh, that is supported in multiple node-based things, not just in Geometry Node, but it's definitely a nice improvement on that front. Uh, geometry nodes just continue to wow people. There was a release of procedural uh, barn builder released earlier last week or the week before, and it was just mind blowing. Uh, there are a number of demos you can download if you want to go ahead and start checking out what geometry nodes are all about. But that is not the extent of the releases in Blender 3.1. We also have things like an all new object, our Wavefront object file format importer. After like years and years and years, it was Blender, uh, sorry, uh, Python based in the past. Now it is written in C++. So if you do an import, uh, of an OBJ file, a very popular format. There is a brand new importer, C++ written. It should be substantially faster. On top of that, if you are an OSX user, the uh, Cycles renderer now has full metal support, which also should definitely be an improvement. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, improvements to Grease Pencil, a couple of improvements to Sculpting, and so on. So let's go jump on over to the release notes and check out what is new in this particular release. So here we see, this is Blender.org. Uh, you can go ahead and download Blender for all major platforms right now. This is release day, so of course their download servers are taking a hit. We're gonna head on over into the What's New section. The release we were talking about today is 3.1. I have to say they've really upped their release day release notes. The release notes are actually a thing of beauty right now. Um, so what we're gonna do is a quick run through what's in there. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, Cycles now has a Metal GPU backend. Metal is sort of like Apple's version of Vulkan. Uh, which, by the way, work is still in progress on a Vulkan backend for Blender as well. So if you are running an M1-powered um, Mac, you should see pretty substantial render improvements using Cycles. As you can see, it almost double uh, in many particular cases. Um, so uh, that is using the GPU uh, over the CPU. Definitely nice to see uh, metal support there, and that was Apple contributing directly. Another thing that they added in was point cloud support. You can now render uh, point clouds directly inside of Cycles, used for things such as uh, sand, water, particle systems, and so on. Uh, you can import those in from other applications. Uh, also, you can uh, create them using geometry nodes if you wish, and they can now be rendered directly inside of the Blender renders, which again is nice. Now we've got other improvements to cycles as well. Um, I'm not gonna go into all of the details here, but you can see here such as uh, improved ray trace uh, precision, optics temporal denoising, and so on and so forth. If you wanna drill into cycles rendering improvement, they are available there. This is mostly a game development channel, so there's not a lot of cycles things in action. Now this is a little clip of that procedural building uh, pr program. You do have to check it out if you haven't seen it already. It really showcases what geometry nodes are all about, but there is a ton of improvements in the procedural systems here, including 19 new nodes, including mesh modeling nodes. One of the really cool ones is you can now extrude things. So if you're making sci-fi greebles and such procedurally, uh, it's going to be a whole lot easier with the new extrude nodes. Uh, so mesh modeling tools, access to time, as I mentioned earlier on, so you can have things, have nodes that uh, update as the timeline in the world advances, opens up a whole new uh, category of options there as well. Advanced field control, incredible performance improvements, um, and yeah, so we've got here, as I mentioned earlier on, there is the new drag and drop functionality. So you drop it down, you get a context sensitive uh, menu pops up for the according types. You also have uh, dynamic search available there, which is actually very, very nice. So as I mentioned, it's not just in the geometry nodes section. Also, it's also available for shader and compositing nodes. So working with nodes in general in Blender is just a more pleasant user experience now. Uh, we also have instanced attributes. Uh, so instances, this is like the individual. So you have like say, a node that creates uh, bananas. Well, you can have each individual banana that is created using a geometry node network can have its own attributes. Um, so you can really kind of change 
uh, how uh, those things will work over time because of this new functionality, which is nice. Again, we have uh, a number of improved nodes. Uh, we've got uh, node group assets. So mark nodes as assets, drag and drop from the asset browser into shading geometry nodes or compositor. The whole asset browser was a big thing in uh, 3.0, I believe. It's just a nice new way of storing everything. And now that includes node groups that you can now drag and drop in. So you can see here, a chocolate bar node is just literally being dropped in from the asset um, browser, which is pretty cool. Um, so you can see at a glance how fast your node is or how long your node is taking, basically a profiling tool built in. Uh, there's also a spreadsheet now list volume grids info, such as grid name, data type, and class. Uh, so we've got several new nodes in. One of the ones I mentioned earlier on was a new extrude node. So you can see what kind of stuff you can do with it. Uh, scale elements, stretch map using field at index, and an accumulator field node, uh, which I think is basically just an additive node. Um, so definitely a lot of new nodes in place, including arc, merge by distance, geometry to instance, uh, dual mesh, the scene time, again, for tracking things either based off the number of seconds or milliseconds that have elapsed since it started, or the individual frame you're currently on, domain size greater than flip faces, vertex neighbor, face neighbors, edge vertices, edge neighbors, face area, mesh island, and edge angle. So a lot of improvements there. Once again, that is that incredibly cool demo I do highly recommend you check out. And then we've got other things such as memory usage uh, reduced by up to 100 times, which is significant, uh, up to 20% improvements in memory usage. Uh, not sure how to reconcile those two statements. Uh, improvements to multi-threading, two to three times speed up processing and so on. So basically it's just gotten uh, faster, better performing, better threading and so on. And a number of other um, improvements to geometry nodes as well. So geometry nodes definitely took a giant step forward in this release. And it, as you see more and more demos of what you can do with geometry node, especially as a game developer, if you're trying to use Blender as a level creation tool, you can start making level aspects of your world using these procedural building blocks of geometry nodes. It's really a powerful tool going forward. Uh, on the modeling side of things, we now have a new vertex creasing options. So you can mark individual vertices as arbitrarily sharp to create interesting shapes more efficiently. Uh, support for Pixar's open sub div uh, for modeling, rendering, Alembic, and USD import export. Uh, then we've got improvements to Grease Pencil. As I said, they really updated their game for these readmes. They're quite a thing of beauty. Uh, field tool now allows negative values, creating a, a contract effect for styles when an outline is needed. Uh, as you can see in effect, here, dialogue versus contract, uh, and then a number of other improvements, including a shrink wrap modifier. Uh, I never actually could totally figure out what exactly the purpose of that one was, uh, but uh, a lot of updates to Grease Pencil in general. Uh, subdivision uh, performance improvements for subdivision surfaces. So uh, playback in the 3D viewport is now much faster thanks to GPU accelerated support of the subdivision modifier. And this is one of those areas I found the performance with um, subdivision surfaces in the past was a, a quite painful. Uh, so this is definitely nice. So you're seeing it go to a steady and constant 24 frames per second as opposed to dripping down into the eight, nine frames per second. So that's definitely an improvement uh, that pretty much everyone's gonna love, but especially in the world of game development where subdivision surfaces are definitely used a lot. Uh, again, I mentioned the object importer, ex sorry, the exporter uh, for OBJ Wavefront object files uh, was rewritten in C++. And uh, time to export, uh, you can see a pretty substantial improvement both on large files and on small files. Uh, the FBX importer also got um, faster importing, ex sorry, exporting, and you can see uh, time to export an FBX file. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, so image editor can now handle large, really large files up to 52K in size, which yeah, I guess that's pretty big. Uh, speed improvements across the board. Uh, yeah, and there's also a Blender benchmarking tool if you want to help them out in terms of uh, showing how well it works. And then we've got and more section. As you see, the and more section has a pretty uh, nice selection of things as well. And if you're really interested, uh, you can get the full release notes in um, broken down detail, quite quite a bit less pretty, uh, but broken down by category. So if you're interested in say what the modeling changes are, uh, you can get some details there. And if you're wondering about a very, like an individual feature such as the new uh, creasing, you can click down into the details of that. Um, this is about as close as we get to uh, documentation at this point, kind of uh, explains the reason behind the project. And this is basically the 
um, the project status page. So you can see how it went over time, but you can often see the purposes of things. Sometimes there'll be a demo file linked or, or something similar, but uh, so if you wanna drill down and find out a little bit more about an individual change, generally a release back to the project page of that particular change is available as well. So I will link all those in the linked article down below, but basically, yeah, Blender 3.1 is here. Uh, as we can see right here that the star of the show is definitely uh, this new, uh, uh, geometry node improvements. Geometry node just keeps getting better. It is a, a heck of a feature. And you can see it for something was just added a few versions back. I think it was Blender, what was it 2.83 had the first, you know, nascent um, geometry node functionality. Uh, in just a little bit over a year, we've, Geometry Nodes has taken a massive step forward. And the tooling to work with it, the, the functionality, the um, the search, the drag and drop, the, just the experience in general is vastly improved. But a lot of other things to like in this release. Uh, Mac OS people, you've got uh, cycles rendering support now for metal, uh, subdivision performance improvements, that new C++ place wavefront object, improvements to grease pencil if you're working in 2D, just a lot here to like. And I'm curious, what do you like most about Blender 3.1? Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.